Because without Islamic eschatology, you cannot understand the world today. No, you cannot. And if you do not understand the world today, then whatever be the piety in your heart, whatever be the efforts that you're making, you're just like a piece of wood in the ocean and then the waves will take you where they want. Because you don't know where you're going. But when you study Islamic eschatology, and when Allah blesses you, then you understand the reality of the world today. You will understand, for example, <coughs> why is it that a universal political dictatorship is descending upon all of mankind? This part of democracy. A universal economic dictatorship is descending upon all of them. Why is this happening? Islamic eschatology will tell you why. And when you understand the reality of the world today, then you can follow the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad. Because there is a part of his sunnah which can be described as the strategic sunnah. Meaning, how to respond to your strategic environment in such a way that you eventually succeed. Before we proceed with the topic, there is a warning in the Quran to those who scoff at this topic, this subject, Akhilul Zaman. They laugh at it. They scorn the subject. Usually <laughs> university graduates. Usually. Uh, usually the secularized mind. Mm -hmm. So they don't really believe in the last era. No. So Allah says in Surah Al Isra, and I quoted this verse before for you. And incidentally, when I was a student, my teacher was teaching and lecturing. I always had a notebook. And I was always taking notes. And when the lecture was over, I go back to my room and I write out the notes. Anytime he quoted the Quran, I go back to my room, search, find the verse of the Quran. But I don't see the notebooks. We <laughs> cause you to forget this lecture by tomorrow's revision. <laughs> so you need to remember it. The verse is in Surah Al Isra, which is also known as Surah Al Bani Isra, Surah number 17. And Allah says, "Bahala wudu Allah min al-Rajim, wa ida." Then we place between you 
and those who scoff at after the Zaman, those who look at this subject with disdain, they don't really have any faith in after the Zaman. They are too secular. So we place between you and them a hijab, which is must to cover. So they will never, never, never be able to penetrate the Quran. And only the Quran can explain the world today. Believe you me. Only the Quran can explain the world today. So, make sure that the heart is in the right place, that the heart is turned to Allah, and you are humble before Allah, with faith in the heart in Akhir Zaman, and then proceed to study the subject. Some companions were sitting talking about themselves. And he, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam, came and asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we are talking about the subject of alamatu sa'a, the sign of the last day, which is after the Zaman. And he said, in the hadith, it is Sahih Bukhari, it is in Sahih Muslim, the last day would not come until, and then he mentioned the ten sign. You lucky I don't have time to question you. You really lucky. I don't have time to question you. He mentioned ten signs. Ten. But these ten have not been given in the order in which they will occur. Number one, Dajjal, al Masih Dajjal. There is a chapter in this book. On the job. And I am now writing my new book on the job, Al Masih of the job. Number two, God and Mara. Praise be to Allah who helped me to finish this book. This is the only book in the market. I'm God of God. I have read some of what is in the market on God of God. It seems to be a good, they should be sent to this land. Scholarly work, scholarly work on God and Makar, if I'm fine. But Alhamdulillah, this book was published, it's my last one. Number three, the return of the son of Mary. Peace and blessing of Allah be upon them both. Number four, Dukha spoke. My view and whenever I give my view, we say Allah knows best. We probably don't have more than about 20, 25 years left before Dukha. Dukha. And when that Dukha comes, most of mankind will die. Most of mankind will die. Number five, the battle of a creature or beast of the up. Up has two meanings. Up could mean, no, sorry, three. Up could mean the material universe. Up can mean the earth. And Ard usually in the Quran refers to Al Ardul Mukaddasa, the Holy Land. So this is a piece of the Ard. Which Ard? My opinion, Ardul Mukaddasa. Number five, number six, that the sun would rise from the west. Now this is teaching. Teaching. 
it, it rises from the east in Pacific Time. Which direction? East. Number six, the sun will rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine. Three, Khusu. Plural of Khas. Shape of the earth. Accompanied by sinking of the heart. One in the east, one in the west, and the third one in Arabia. And number ten, a fire which will come out of Yemen and drive people to the base of assembly of Hasha. These are the ten. Today's lecture, tonight's lecture, is on one of the ten. The subject is located in the Quran. And so more it will be. But there's a story of how it came down. And that story must be told. That the Arabs did not know how to assess the faith of one amongst them. They had such a high regard for him that they called him Al Amin. Al Amin. That was worthy. And yet he claimed now that he is a prophet. Like Abraham, alayhi salam, and Moses, alayhi salam. How can we tell whether he is indeed a prophet? So they sent a delegation to the northern city of Yathrib, which is now called Medina, to ask the rabbis, the Jewish rabbis. So the rabbis responded, and said, ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer, not even the woman of Malaysia can answer. <coughs> only a prophet. <coughs> Question one, ask him about the young man and the key. Number two, ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the earth. And question three, ask him about the growth. I have analyzed these questions in a book entitled Suratul Kafir the Paradise. But unfortunately, we don't have it tonight. But if you read that book, you will read my analysis of all the three questions. The answers came down. And the answer to question three was put to that a lot. The answer to question three about the roof was put in Surah to Bani Israel. But the answers to questions one and two were put in Surah al After these answers came down, come on, Rabbi, what happened? We don't hear you. You said only a prophet can answer. And now here's the answer. Why is the rabbi so silent? For 14, 20 years, the rabbis have been silent. Huh? So anytime I meet a rabbi who asks him, come on, rabbi, hear the answers. <laughs> you tell only a prophet can answer. Hear the answers. Are they true? Who are they false? Rabbi doesn't talk. 1400 years now we've been waiting. Rabbi doesn't talk. We are concerned with the great traveler. And the Quran 
responds with kidney. وَيَسْأَلُونَ زَكَ عَنْ ذِلْقَ بْنَيْنِ And they question thee about ذِلْقَ بْنَيْنِ قَرْ means a horn but قَرْ also means an age which one? Is Zulkar being someone who possesses two horns? Or is Zulkar being someone who impacts on two ages? When we search the Quran to see how has Allah used the word Qabn, we find that He always used the word Qabn in the Quran to mean age and not horn. So we say, well, maybe, maybe, Zulkar name is someone who impacts on two ages. But if you say two horns, you have the right to do so. No need for any boxing gloves. We say two ages. <coughs> Zulkar name is someone who possesses faith in Allah. Amen. And Allah gave to Zulkarnain power. The power to do anything he wanted to do. That is only a superpower. So we have to call Zulkarnain superpower. Superpower. Only superpower can do that. Malaysia can't do that. Superpower. So this is power and this power rests on the foundations of faith. Notice that I am teaching this subject slowly. You know why? Because you were going to teach it. That's why. You're not sitting down here just for enjoying the lecture. You have to go and teach this subject now. That's why I'm going to slowly. Power rests on the foundations of faith. Surah al kahf now tells us when power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? This is the first age, and then we go to the second age. Come in. Zulkarnain name travels in the direction of the setting of the sun, which means west. And then he travels second journey in the direction of the rising of the sun, which means east. And then he travels on a third journey. But the rabbis did not saw it. But Allah knew that is what they wanted to know. Whether Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam knew about the third journey. But they only asked about the two. But Allah answered and gave them the third. And we know that the third journey was in the northern direction. How do we know that? Answer. The Hadith tells us, Sahih Muslim, that when, <coughs> when Gog and Magog are released, and this is the third journey, because in the third journey, he comes to Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog will pass by the Sea of Galilee, and drink the water. And by the time the last of them pass, they will say, there used to be water here. But when they pass the Sea of Galilee, where are they going? Answer, Hadith tells us, Jerusalem. So, in order to pass the Sea of Galilee, 
the God of Jerusalem, you got to come from the north. You got to come from the north. So we are looking at the geographical territory north of the Holy Land. North of the Holy Land. Good. So he travels to the setting of the sun. And then he came across a body of dark, murky water. The, the water is dark and murky because there's a lot of algae in the water. North of the Holy Land, and to the west, there are only two bodies of water. You did study geography at school, didn't you? Huh? One is the Mediterranean Sea, but the water in the Mediterranean Sea is clear. And you can see several meters down. There is only one more body of water north of the Holy Land to the west. And it is called the Black Sea. It is called the Black Sea. Why? Because it is dark, murky. Lots of algae, you can't see more than maybe one meter. The commentator of the Quran, Ibn Kathir, identifies the Black Sea to be the sea, the Sulkar name which. So we're making progress now, aren't we? Geographical position here. So when he reached to the Black Sea, he came across a people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him, How are you going to treat them? When power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used with mankind? Zulkarnin replies and he says, Whosoever, whosoever is an oppressor, I will punish you. So when power rests on the foundation of the faith, power is used to punish the oppressor. And when he returns to you, you will also punish him, said Zulkarnay. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has zero tolerance for oppression. You could be in the masjid five times a day. You could fast all of Ramadan. You could be performing your salat and tahajjud. But if you are oppressing people, Allah will destroy. In Singapore, an Indonesian maid works for 300 Singapore dollars a month. She's my daughter, my daughter, my sister. No Singaporean woman would work and do the work that the Indonesian maid is doing. No Singaporean woman would do it for 300 dollars. This qualifies as oppression. And once there is oppression, Allah will destroy you. So when Singapore is destroyed, goodbye, we won't miss you. Now it's for you to check out to see where else there is oppression. Allah says in the Quran, about oppression. And it is again in Surah Al-Isra. Listen. 
Because around the world today there is oppression. In every city in the world today there is oppression. Even while the city is bigger, when the last time you go KLCC, huh? the city is bigger, don't they? But there is oppression. So Allah says, وَإِن مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ عَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَهِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا Not a single city will escape. This is not Imran Hussein. No, 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 no. This is Allah. Not a single city will escape. We are going to destroy them all. All. And those which escape destruction, we will punish with terrible punishment. And this is something inscribed in the Kitab. I want to share with you my view. Because I have been in the field of Islamic eschatology for a long time now, while they were drinking Tikari. My view is that destruction of all the cities is probably not more than 20, 25 years away from now. And so there's going to be very few people on the earth in another 20, 25 years from now. This is my view and a lot of them. So I will punish them. And when they return to you, you will punish them. But those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous, I will treat them nicely and they will be rewarded. So when power rests on the foundations of faith, this is the kind of world that mankind would have if only you follow Muhammad and then he traveled in the opposite direction leaving leaving the Black Sea and going east if you leave the Black Sea and you go east you're going to have to stop when you reach the water can't go any further because there's another sea and it's called huh? Caspian Oh, you did geography, okay. The Caspian Sea. The Caspian Sea. And then he came across a people. Now we have a problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses agonizingly few words, very, very, very few words. And I don't understand it yet. Few words in English. Lam naja'al lahum, lam naja'al lahum min dunia sitra. No city, no cover did we provide for them other than this. No covering did we provide for these people other than this. Could it be that these are a people who are living a primitive way of life? And only the natural covering that Allah provides, only that they have. Could it be? Allah knows that. now has to decide how is he going to treat such a people and can you believe this that the answer in the Quran is in one word only one word Kazarik Kazarik and that's it how are we going to penetrate this subject with one word Kazarik could it be that he decided 
Tulukarne because of his compassion, because of his wisdom, he decided to leave them as they were. And Allah says, we understood why he acted in this way. So when power rests on the foundation of the faith, power will respect the primitive way of life. I think we're making progress now. Then Zulkar name traveled in the third direction, and we recognize it to be north now. But between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, there is an unbroken range of mountains. What are they called? Huh? The Caucasus Mountains. Do you know the geography? The Caucasus Mountains. And there's something strange and mysterious about the Caucasus region because the white European always refers to him as a Caucasian, white Caucasian male. Hey, were you born in Boston, man? How come you're Caucasian? Yeah. Why are you calling yourself Caucasian for? Something mysterious going on here. The link with Caucasus. Does it have to do with God and Maram? So he now travels north and comes across a people. The Quran is giving you hint after hint. It's up to you to pick it up. He comes across a people whose language could not be understood. Meaning that this language is not connected with all the other languages in the region. You start from South India and you go up and you see that their languages are connected with each other if you go up. Yeah? Some words are the same, but they're different languages. But this one is a unique language, different from all the other languages in the region. Could not be understood. Is there such a language in that region? Yes, there is. And up to this day, it has been preserved. It is the Georgian language. The Georgian language is different from all the regional languages. So we are making progress in this lecture. When he came across these people whose language could not be understood, they were located at a pass in the mountain range. There was only one pass this unbroken mountain range from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea and this is where they were passed. When they were able to communicate, I don't know how long it took. I know how long it would take me to learn Bahasa. <laughs> so when they were able to communicate, then these people Informed the Zulkarnay. The God and the God are perpetrating facade. There are acts that we commit which are called sins. And sins are punished up there. But there are other acts that we commit, we commit which are not just sin, they are also called crimes. 
a criminal act is punished here. And among the crimes that we can commit, the biggest one of all is Fasad. And the punishment for Fasad is the severest one of all. There are grades of Fasad, the Quran tells you. And at the lowest level, we punish you by punishment. Oh, you can never come back. Punishment. But there are other grades of facade, and at the highest level, you will be your your hand and your foot will be cut off from opposite side. Did you hear? Huh? Did you hear? The hand and the foot will be cut off from opposite sides. Then you'll be crucified. That's in the Quran. This is the punishment for facade. So these people, God and Makar, oh my gosh, they're terrible. They commit the worst crimes possible. Facade fell out. So these people appealed to Zulfarne, can you help us? We are prepared to pay you, not to bring that to us. Gold and silver, right? We are prepared to pay you. Can you build a barrier between these, uh, in this past, sudden, sudden, it's a barrier, sudden. Zulkarni now responds very strangely. If Allah has given to him the power to do whatever he wants to do, then why does he not go in there and beat them up? Give them the lesson of their life to do. Never again do what they do. Huh? So he should say, listen, I don't need to build any barrier. Why do you need a barrier? I'm here, I'm good for him. But strangely, he agrees to build the barrier, indicating that he does not have the power to destroy it. These are more powerful than any superpower that you can find. In Sahih Muslim, there is the Hadith al qudsi in which Allah says, I have created creatures of mine, God and God, who are so powerful that none but I can destroy them. So there is no power on earth, including a fellow called Usama bin Laden in some case in Afghanistan. No power in the world who can defeat and destroy God and Muhammad. Only Allah can do He says, I don't need your money. As Suleiman said the same thing when the Queen of Salah sent the gifts. I don't need your money. What well, Allah has given to me more valuable than that. But help me with manpower. Bring me Zubarul Hadid. Hadid is not a Syrian fellow with a shop in here city. Hadid is iron. Iron. Bring me Zubarul Hadid. Bring me blocks of iron. فَلَمَّ سَاوَ بَيْنَ الصَّدَفَيْنِ Oh, oh, another hint now. You see the hints are coming there one after the other. But you've got to pick them up. The Quran changes the language. It doesn't speak of sun anymore. It now speaks of Sadafain. Sadafain means the two sides of a shell. If you open a shell, 
the joint at the bottom, and you go up like this. So the pass and the mountain is shaped like this. It's still there to this day. You don't even have to buy a ticket to travel to find it. This good Google. Google the search engine of the internet and you find it. It's called the Dariel Gorge. And it is shaped like this. Salafai. So he takes blocks of iron and he fills it up between the Salafai. Which means that there must be iron ore deposits in that region. And yes, there is iron ore deposit up to this day in that region. So we're making progress with this lecture, aren't we? Yes. Then he said, blow with your bellows, making a furnace. And bring me molten copper, which he poured upon the blocks of iron. And the engineers tell me this is to prepare for us. And so now the barrier is built. And God and Bagad are now north of the barrier. The Rada built by Zulkarnay. Then Zulkarnay spoke and he says, now it's like the neither pair sit nor the kid. Oh boy, but so they are blocked. Zulkarnain now speaks. And you'll have to tell me how a Greek emperor who worshipped Mars and Venus and gods and goddesses, fellow named Alexander, you'll have to tell me how he could speak these words. Okay? If you accept that nonsense, that Zulkarnain was Alexander. Listen to what Zulkarnain says. It is the Surah Dulkaf. This barrier is constructed as an act of mercy from Allah, from my Allah. So he worships Allah, not some Greek goddess. But now he says something more, which Tom Dick and Harry doesn't know. And when that time comes of which my Lord has come, Allah is going to bring down this barrier. This is eschatology. I don't think Zulfarnain did that study at university. I mean, sorry, Alexander. I don't think Alexander studied eschatology. For either be. And when that time comes of which my Lord has born, Allah is going to bring down the marriage. And then the warning of my Lord will be fulfilled. So God and Makar are now contained by the barrier. But one day the barrier will go down. And when it goes down, what's going to happen? They'll be released. They have power. Their power is greater than Zulkarnain, so this is super, super power. But this power rests on foundations which are godless. Because an oppressor, an oppressor, who has a PhD in oppression, constantly oppressing, cannot have faith in Allah. And this power, which rests on foundations which are godless, would be the supreme power in the world. Are you beginning to see? Are you beginning to recognize the reality of the world of today? They don't teach this at university, you know. So when Allah brings down the barrier, what kind of world will it be? 
it will be a world in which these people would possess supreme power and they will sweep away everything before them. Every civilization before them will be swept away. And they will take control of the world and they will rule the world. But their rule will be on foundations which will be darkness and they will use power to oppress. Are you beginning to understand the world in which you live in now? You had no knowledge of this before the Quran, did you? Did I not say only the Quran can explain the world today? Did I not say? Yeah, it's the Quran. One people will rule the world when Allah brings down that barrier. And when they rule the world, there will be no power in the world which can rival them or challenge them, including the Muslims in life. Their power will be invincible. Invincible. Only a lot of destroy them. But these are going to be agents of facade. They will use their power to oppress. They will use their power to corrupt. They will use their power to destroy. And so anywhere you turn in the world is only oppression. Anywhere you turn in the world everything is being corrupted. Huh? Those who have eyes with which to see will recognize that this is the worst possible world. We've come there for their time. One day Allah will bring down the barrier. And when He brings it down, then God and Makar are going to be released. And when they are released, there's going to be facade all over the world. <coughs> Everything will be corrupted, destroyed, including money. Including money. It is not by accident that the money which is in the Quran and the money which is in the Sunnah, the gold dinar and the silver dirham, has disappeared. No. The reason why it has disappeared and has been replaced by this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper currency. The reason for this is located there, in Gav and Magar. Will Allah be impressed with you, I ask you, if you devote yourself to an effort to restore the gold in our silver era, and that is something commendable. Will Allah be impressed with you when you pursue this effort without any understanding of how did the gold dinar and silver dirham disappear? Who is it who caused it to disappear? And why did they cause it to disappear? No, Allah is not impressed by such a servant. And when a servant of Allah comes to you, traveling from Trinidad to Caracas, Caracas to Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires to Cape Town, Cape Town to KL, leaving my home, leaving the comfort of my home, at an age when I'm knocking on the door of 70, to come to you to teach you that which you do not know. Because nobody is teaching Islamic eschatology. Will you not listen? Will you not take heed? Will you not change? Will you not make an effort? Will you not now make an effort to understand the subject of Islamic eschatology? To understand the subject of God and Magad so you will understand why the Sunnah money disappeared. 
and why did this corrupt monetary system come? Hmm? All I can do before I leave is to urge you to turn around and move this way to the Quran. Then Zulkarni traveled to the opposite direction and there he came across a people Huh? So when power rested on the foundations of faith, power respected the primitive way of life. Hmm? Suppose these people living by the Caspian Sea. Suppose you were to discover something called, you heard about it, oil, O-I-L. Suppose, I'm just su suggesting, suppose you will discover a huge basin of oil in the Caspian Sea. Did it happen? Huh? It happened. The Caspian Sea has a huge basin of oil bigger than Saudi Arabia. Bigger than Saudi Arabia. How will power be used? In the first age, Kazali, Zulkarnay had the compassion, the integrity to leave them as they were. Because the human being is more important than the economic resources. Human values come first and everything else comes after. Kavranna Bani we have honored the progeny of Adam and Eve, sir. But now, when God and Makkah are released, how will they treat a people who live a primitive way of life? Go ask them in North America. What did they do to the American Indians? Huh? These people who say, that we have brought to the world the most advanced civilization that mankind has ever experienced. Because they measure progress by the height of the building. And they measure progress by, I don't know whether you've heard about it, it is something small like this, and you can press, and no matter where you are, you can drop it, you'll find it both. About cell phone. Have you heard about it? <laughs> and you measure progress by the, you don't need a donkey cart anymore, you don't need a horse anymore, you don't need a BMW. This is progress. This is the yardstick that they use to measure progress. So now, how are rest of the foundation that are progress? And this power is used to destroy the primitive way of life. So now the American Indian is part of the blue genes, Jamaat. Yeah. The American Indian loses his language, loses his way of life, and he has the same hypertension and the same heart disease and the same prostate and, you know, the whole works. Like everybody else. He's also just as overweight as all the rest. Because he's lost his way of life and he's not following his way. They've destroyed the primitive way of life. And when there's oil, they ship you out, throw you somewhere else, so that they can destroy your resources. What a terrible world it is when God and Baba will be released. And so now we've understood God's name the two ages. The age in which power rests on the foundations of faith. And the age in which power rests on foundations of the darkness. In this one power is used to punish the oppressor. In this one power is used to oppress. The Quran is teaching you the world to live. When will Allah bring down the barrier? Before we proceed, a lesson in methodology. 
a lesson in methodology. I'm afraid I'm going to take a little more time to learn. If you don't mind. At the beginning of the Quran, Allah teaches a lesson in methodology. He gave an order to the angels to bow down before Adam and Eve. So, I'm for such a do in the Eclipse. And they all bow down, they all prostrated except Eclipse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not deficient in the use of language. The sentence is constructed like this deliberately to teach methodology. And it is being taught at the beginning. So you don't have an excuse. If you study this verse of the Quran by itself, using a wrong methodology, just by itself, then, since the order was given to the angels, and they all prostrated except at least, at least has to be an angel. You can't get away from that. You cannot get away from that. At least has to be an angel. If you use this wrong methodology of taking one verse in isolation, or taking one at least in isolation. But when you use the correct methodology and you go to the totality of the Quran, then you say, hey, wait a minute. Looks like you want to make a mistake here. Because here Allah is saying about the angels, they don't have any free will. No, no, no. They have to do what they are ordered to do. So when a command is given to an angel, the angel must obey. But he disobeyed. He disobeyed. So he can't be an angel. Looks as what made a mistake. Now your face is becoming red. Because you said, at least has to be an angel. And you think the wrong as an angel. And then when you go to Surah to the Quran, of the Quran, Allah says, look at him in a gym. This is the Quran teaching methodology. Do not, do not, do not make the mistake of taking one hadith in isolation and ignoring all the body of data in the Quran and in the rest of the Hadith. Don't do that. Do not make the mistake of taking one verse of the Quran in isolation. Don't take Jews and Christians as your friends and allies. They are friends and allies of each other. This is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs> when you take the totality of the data, then you get a different picture. Do not take such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends and allies of each other. So the Quran is anticipating the emergence of a Jewish Christian alliance. When that Jewish Christian alliance emerges, do not Somebody should have told us to push the Mubarak. <laughs> Do not be their friends and allies. No sense talking to the Saudi. They don't listen. <laughs> they don't listen. So now, now that we have learned this lesson in methodology, when is Allah going to break down the barrier? Is it still standing up to your arms? If it is, what are you doing here in PJ? Why don't you go to search for it? Huh? If you say the barrier is still standing, don't you have any love for the Quran? A Quran, a barrier which is located in the Quran, it is still standing. Does your heart not long to go and see it before and touch it? Built by Zulkarni, what kind of people are you? Huh? Nobody goes to search for it. And yet.
then you will tell me this is standing. Well, if you don't want to go and do a Google search, no? Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam in this case at the home of his wife Sayyidina radhi Allah ta'ala This is Madina and in his sleep he sees something it's called a fish at Rukia It is terrible Terrible He wakes up from his sleep but his face is flushed red what did he see? He said, Wailul Woe unto the Arabs because of a great evil which is now going to come upon them. It is close. Karib. And then he raised his hands like this and he made a circle. He said, today, a hole has been made in the, he used the word, Rada. Rada, which is like a dam, absolute indicating that the destruction of the barrier had commenced, indicating that the release of God and not God has commenced. This hadith is located in Sahih Bukhari, I think about eight times. In this book, you'll find an entire chapter. On the Jal, you'll find an entire chapter on God and not God. And all the hadiths again. In this book, We've done the whole works on only God and God. We find all the Ahadiths there. And so the release of God and the God has now commenced. But why? Why you do it in the Arab? You should be why you in us, all of mankind. Woe unto mankind. He didn't say woe unto mankind. He said woe unto the Arabs. Meaning, when God and Magad are released, they have a special target. Their special target is the Arabs. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha then asked, Will we be destroyed? And uh, no, later. Will we be destroyed, meaning the Arabs, when they are amongst us those who are righteous in Kandahar? That's the question. To which he replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, Nah, the Arabs are going to be destroyed when either al Hamas. When Khabas, not skinness, pornography, when Khabas prevails in the world, that is the sign that the time has come for the destruction of the Arabs. That destruction is around the corner. <coughs> it will await biological war because the prophet prophesied. He said the Arabs are going to be wiped out by plague. plague. So biological war. And there is also more than that, big war that Israel has to wage around the world. And so now we know that the release of God and of God took place in the lifetime of the Prophet that is God. Well then who are they? Who are they? They are located north of the Caucasus Mountains. North. So we have to look north of the Caucasus Mountains for a people who display extraordinary power. But who in addition to having power, use power wickedly. 
be. And thirdly, we're heading in that direction. They have an obsession for the holy man. Everything they do is connected with Jerusalem. Who are God and Bhagavad? Ford Motor Car? 
Henry Ford produced a book called The International Jew. And it was published here in KL. I don't want to mention the name of the publisher. It was published here in KL. So we got all four volumes right here in KL. Because I gave the book to, to him and I asked him to publish it. And he published it. And now he's done. Henry Ford did the research. The Chaza came over to the United States. And then infiltrated into the United States. And they have taken power, taken control of power in the United States, the Khazar. Mm -hmm. So we locate God and Bagan in the Zionist Judeo-Christian alliance who have their origins hundreds of thousands, hundreds of years ago in the Khazar tribe. What is going to be the end of Bhagavad Gita? The prophet said that when Bhagavad Gita was released, the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water. If you choose to understand this literally, then you will have to go by the Sea of Galilee and wait with your camera digital. You see a people passing by drinking the water. Okay? This is this is the difference between Islamic scholarship and pseudo scholarship. The Prophet said that the Dajjal will ride on a donkey. And the donkey will travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey will have his hair stretched out wide. So if you're waiting for someone who's going to stand up in Jerusalem, declare, I am the Messiah, and he's going to have this flying donkey, you are entitled to your view. There's no need for any boxing. No need. But we have we have a different kind of Islamic scholarship. How is it different? In our Islamic scholarship, we recognize this to be religious symbolism. And so we say the flying donkey is already here. In fact, there's one flying donkey out there that you can actually perform your salat and tell you which in the direction of Kibla. <laughs> And so we say, when God, had, when the first of them are released, they pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water. We understand that to mean consuming the water. Like, for example, this foolishness. I mean, really foolishness. We're going to make the desert green. Allah created the desert, you know. <laughs> We're going to make the desert green. To make the desert green, you're going to have to take all the water in the Sea of Galilee, isn't it? And by the time the last of them pass, they will say there used to be water there. So the Hadith has given us an index for a yardstick by which we can measure the passage of God and Magad. When you see the water level in the Sea of Galilee, has reached such a level where the sea is essentially dead, can never be revived. You know that the bulk of God and Magad have already passed, and only few now left to pass. So now we've got to go and take a look at the water that and still get it. I have a student in Haifa, in, 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 in the Holy Land. He's been writing to me now for some time. But I saw him for the first time when we had the International Islamic Retreat in Cape Town before I came here. And he traveled from Haifa to attend the retreat. So I met my student for the first time. And he is constantly monitoring the water level of the Sea of Galilee and constantly informing him. The Sea of Galilee long ago had reached the point of no return. It can never be right. Is waiting to dry up now. Hmm? 
So we are now faced with intangible, irrefutable evidence that God and Bhagavad have been passing for some time now and we are close to the end. What is the end? We go, we go back now to Surah Al-Kat. Where Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا بَعَدَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْدٍ I think this qualifies as the most difficult verse in the whole Quran. وَتَرَكْنَا بَعَدَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ يَمُوجُ فِي بَعْدٍ وَلُفِتَ فِي السُّورِ فَجَمَعَنَا هُمْ جَمَعًا I will be interpreting the verse so Allah is better. And I am disappointed when people accept my views just before they come from me. That's a disappointment. You should not accept anything I give as my opinion unless you are convinced that it is correct. Now you are good student. I used to tell my teacher, Mawlana Sultan Rahman and Sadi, that I'm not a if I'm sitting here teaching this study, that no one else will be able to teach because of it. But he trained me this way. I never accepted anything my teacher taught me, never. I used to go to him and say to him, Mawlana, I don't agree with you. At the age of 22, but then three or four months later, I'll go to him and say, well, then now I agree with you. Because I had to be convinced that it was correct before I accepted it. If only the world of Islamic scholarship could wake up. Huh? And become critical in your thinking. People will show more respect for the Ustad when they see a man who is critical in his thinking. وَتَرَقْدَ بَعْدَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَمُوْتُ فِيهَا Could mean that we will cause them to merge with each other like waves. Merge with each other like waves. The way waves in the sea merge with each other. And as you constantly merge with each other, it's called globalization. And so eventually one global society emerges. I call it the blue jean demand. One global society emerges. It matters not whether they are Jew or Christian or Hindu or Muslim or Buddhist. They are all living essentially in the same way of life. And it's the way of life of God and God. That is one of the meanings. But there is a second possible meaning. That there are waves which will crash against each other. And when a wave crashes against another wave, you can see the white foam. Hmm? These are not waves coming together and merging. These are waves coming against each other. Against each other. If two powerful waves come to crash against each other, you better run. Don't be mean that. You're going to be spread. You're going to be destroyed. Two powerful waves crash against each other. For example, when Pharaoh attempted to cross, and then Allah caused the water to start as a passage. So you have a mountain of water on this side and a mountain of water on that side. But when Firaun attempted to cross, Allah caused the water to come down. So water from this side crashing against water from that side. Could anybody survive? Nobody survived. This is your Lord you revive as well. So from this we get the possibility. That there is going to be a crash of God against Magad. That is how this book ends. That the Russian alliance with which China is going to be a part, 
will eventually crash and crash against the American dead alliance. The American dead alliance, the Anglo-American Israeli alliance is NATO, have a pig-headed obsession to rule the world. But Russia will not bend this knee, and China will not bend this knee. The Saudis not only bend the knee, they don't on their face. They're down on their face, the Saudis. But Russia will not bend this knee, and China will not bend this knee. So we are moving, this is why they're encircling Russia right there, nuclear missiles, encircling Russia. Because you're moving towards the showdown. And when that clash takes place, which is probably 20, 25 years from now, when that clash, that crash takes place between Bagh and Bagh, that's the smoke. Go <coughs> Who will survive that? The cities won't survive. Why will the cities all be destroyed? Is there something to do with radiation from nuclear weapons? And that radiation has <coughs> facilitates the travel of that radiation when you're in an area in the middle of cell phones. And so wherever you could use a cell phone, you know when that takes place, the lobby made into sunny side of eggs. So the safest place for you, if you are interested in surviving, not, only, not everybody is interested in surviving, not only, but if you are interested in surviving, the safest place to be is a place where you can use a cell phone. And that is the most important project of the most important. A location in the remote country. But you don't have to follow us in the village. No. If you are comfortable in the city and you don't mind becoming a sunny side up Friday when that clash takes place, by all means you can stay in the city. No need for any boxing club. The man who says he's not a terrorist, he's not doing with sedition and so on. He's just saying maybe one in a thousand might want to save themselves. One in a thousand would want to get off the ship. One in a thousand, I want to go to the remote countryside where rain falls, taking them from sheep and goats, to survive the clash of God and God. When, when the Jal completed his mission, and of course the Jal would not have completed his mission until Israel replaced the United States as the ruling state of the world. And Israel would not have become the ruling state of the world until Israel has also expanded their territory from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. All of these things are still remaining to occur. <coughs> when Israel has ruled the world for a day which is like a week, a day which is like a week, there you are, a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week. The Hadith of Sahih Sahi Muslim. Then the Jal is going to stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am the Messiah. Then 25, 30 years from now. It is only at that time that Imam al Mahdi will emerge. Only at that time that Nabi Isa alayhi salam will return on the war. And Nabi Isa alayhi salam will now kill the Jal. And the Hadith says, Sahih, Sahih Muslim, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهِ يَعْجُوا جَوْنَةُ Allah will now send God and not God. He didn't say release. No. Allah will now send God and not God. And they will pursue Nabi Isa alayhi salam and the believers who will now climb up a mountain in Beit Baptis. And they will say, we have killed all those who are on the earth. Now let us kill those who are in the heavens above. And they will shoot their arrows up into the sky, missiles. 
So there must be military platforms up there, spaceships. And allow will cause the arrows to come back down with blood on them. Don't ask me to explain that. And then comes the destruction of God and God by Allah. Through something which attacks them in the back of the neck, the top of the spine. Maybe a bacteria or something. And they will all fall down paralyzed. By next morning they will all be dead. And then Allah will send, Nabi Isa Islam will pray for Allah. And Allah will send prehistoric birds with necks that act like camels and pick up the bodies that have been thrown by Allah that have been thrown. The Quran now speaks. Over there is وَفَبَعَثَ Allah. Remember the word وَفَبَعَثَ Allah. Yet to your life. That is the hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Muslim. And so many people take this solitary hadith only one, ignoring all the rest of the data, and read and misinterpret this hadith to say Allah will now release God and Allah. And so the world of Islamic scholarship is waiting for Nabi Isa and Islam to return. And only after he returns, and after he is killed the God, only then will God and Allah be released. Because of his misunderstanding, of one solitary hadith. No. Allah doesn't use ba'atha for release. Now let me take you to one verse of the Quran and we finish. It is in Surah Al-Anbiya. <coughs> and here we have the word release. Allah speaks of a time. He destroyed that time. He expelled the people of the town. And then he placed a ban on them that they could never return to this town to reclaim the their own. Never. They could come back as tourists, but they cannot come back to reclaim it as their own. Until, until when? Listen. Waharam ala Listen to the words.